So we've come upon a new cycle. Um, this is another six week cycle that we're doing here. And this video is going to be called the Cycle Companion. This is going to be explanations of not only the movements visually and explaining them verbally, but also why we're doing them, what we're hoping to get out of them. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Take this as a kind of a tutorial for something that you to pay attention to before class. And also if you're just watching this and not a part of OCF, take a chance to learn some different movements and we're happy to answer any questions at any time. Thanks. Hey guys, so this cycle we're going to be working on a uh, snatch complex um, and we're building from last cycle so we're actually taking it a little bit lower um, this time around. So what we're going to be doing is a snatch from below the knee, then resetting and going into a snatch from the ground. Okay? And basically what this is going to do is going to help us build um, endurance and strength in the mid back and lats for those positions. So what Beck is going to be doing is she's going to be loading up by pushing the hips back, dropping our butt just a little bit right underneath the knee. She's going to go ahead and explode up, land in a full snatch, uh, squat snatch. She's going to put the bar on, reset, get nice and tight, ready to lift again, and snatch. What this is doing again, guys, is that first part is helping us transition from below the knee and keeping the barbell nice and close into the explosive uh, part of that movement as well. So, enjoy. Hi guys, Coach Angelo here talking about the Hang Dumbbell Power Snatch. This is a variation that we're allowing the fitness group to do this cycle to help develop explosive power and also what it feels like to drop under something uh, with the snatch without the mobility restrictions of using a barbell or anything like that. So we're going to do this from the hang position. First the hang position, as you can see when Rocio picks this up, when she stands up with the dumbbell, the hang position is anywhere from above her knee to her thigh here. So we would prefer if you just load it back a little bit to about at least the mid thigh. So Rocio we'll step back right there. Make sure your back is nice and tight. You have a slight bend in your knee. It's not super locked out, but you're not going forward. So making sure to load up your glutes and hamstrings. From there, we'll see how get to accelerate, jump, and extend, and punch yourself under the bar in a catching position. Good. Reset. As you see, when Rocio does this, one of the major things that she's focusing on is actually her punching herself under the dumbbell after she jumps, not her trying to press it out in a very aggressive position. We're trying to think about the dumbbell maybe coming up this high, and then Rocio punching down under, punching under it and locking out the rest of the distance. Demonstrate one more time. See how that dumbbell did go up there? So when you guys are focused on this, I want you to be really thinking about jumping and extending, jumping and extending. Another part of this cycle that we're really excited about for the fitness group is this is going to be done in a, in a lower rep range. So two to three reps. Actually, we're going to be starting with the three reps. So you're going to be able to grab a dumbbell that's going to be a little bit more challenging once you have the technique dialed in. We're going to go over the deficit deadlift today and why we perform them in this cycle. So the deficit deadlift helps build your strength for the pull off the ground because it's actually putting your body at a further position to the floor because you're standing on plates. So in this example, Rocio is standing on 25 pound plates, which gives her about a two inch deficit. The main things you want to look for in this is that you're able to keep your back in a good position and your lumbar position well in that bottom deficit position because otherwise we don't want you pulling from a deficit. We'll stick to the floor for now and we'll work on that strength in that position until we're able to lift ourselves up onto some plates. When you get set up for it, you want to make sure that the bar is still right over the shoelaces even though you're on plates. So pull it all the way at you. You're going to drop your butt down and you're going to load the quads just a little bit more than a normal deadlift because of the deficit. You're also able to target a lot more of the posterior in this movement with that little bit of deficit at the bottom. You're still going to stay tight, pull fast to the hip, control all the way down to the floor, Pause on the floor for a second to regain that tension and then pull back up. Make sure you have this good position in your back, otherwise we'll probably keep you at the floor for this cycle. So another movement that we're going to be focused on for this cycle for the performance and the fitness group is the single arm strict press plus single arm push press. This is a very tough variation using a dumbbell for one, but now making it only a single arm requires much more core stability and a little bit more coordination. Some of you may also realize that one arm is weaker than the other. I'd recommend talking to a coach about this and seeing if they could prescribe a different sort of rep range to bring up the weak, the weak arm or the lagging arm to get it to the stronger arm. When you're choosing a weight, please be, uh, please be cognizant of this and focus on the weaker arm when you're selecting. So you're going to start with the dumbbell, high on your shoulder, and the first movement is the strict press. So uh, Susie's going to demonstrate just pumping out some strict presses, give me two reps. 
Good. One thing that Susie's going to be a little bit focused on is making sure that she's keeping her belly down, real, her belly down and tight, really good throughout the movement, and making sure that she's not overextending. Give me one more rep, a little more control. Beautiful, perfect. Now she needs to make a slight foot adjustment for the push press, that's totally okay. Now she's gonna get into the push press using a, a dip to get the hip extension and drive through. Go ahead. Good. One more time, hold tight at the top. Very good. She's gonna make sure the dumbbell is stacked right into her heels. One of the biggest things that we're gonna be focused on when she's doing this movement is making sure that there's no movement laterally in her torso, that this is gonna stay really tight. So if I was watching Susie do this movement and I just cut her off from here up, I wouldn't know what dumb, what leg she was or what side that she was supposed to be using for this. It's gonna be all tight down here and we only look if I looked up there. Do it one more time, keep that belly tight. Good. See how she could see how even Susie gets a little falling apart. So make sure when you're doing this, do one more time. Maybe go to the camera. Beautiful. That you relax. Good. You're nice and tight here, and you're focused on your torso staying here, not deviating left to right in between the movement. This is going to be the challenge of keeping this together, not just the weight. Good luck, guys. Why we do clusters, specifically in the back squat for this cycle? Um, so. Our tempo for the back squat this cycle is three seconds down, two second pause in the bottom, fast up, one second at the top. And how clusters are written are typically the number of reps you're doing each set with a period or dot after the number to let you know that there should be a rest in between those numbers. Particularly in this cycle, we're going to be using a 10 second rest in between each of the singles. What clusters can help with, you're able to keep intensity high because you do have that short rest in between each of the squats. You're able to get volume up at that high intensity, which you're unable to usually do when you're doing the reps in a row. You're able to build endurance in that strength, and you're also able to work a lot on form and technique because you're doing those singles versus kind of wearing down over two, three, four reps in a row. So clusters are gonna be really great to help us build strength and endurance while keeping that intensity and volume up. It's Coach Susie here, and I am here to talk about the back squat, which we are doing again in this cycle. And I have my lovely model, Becca. She'll be demonstrating for us. And we are doing back squats this cycle with a tempo. We are nice and controlled on the way down, um, and we are pausing at the bottom. And the reason why we do that is that we are really using those muscles and controlling them and having them have that tension, and you're exploring up with power, okay? Right now, before she descends down, we're going to make sure she has a full grip on that barbell. This is going to make sure that her lats are nice and tight. And she's going to take a nice big belly full of air. If she takes that air, she's almost going to push that air down, the side of her hips. And this makes sure that she has that nice neutral curve on her spine. And as she explodes up, she still has that curve, guys. So uh, the best one is the foundational movement that we use. It helps develop um, the most muscles, arguably. It helps develop her core. She's gonna use her glutes, of adductors and hamstrings, and her quads. So in this cycle, one day of the week, we're gonna have a gymnastics skill session. Okay, this is a little bit different than having it in a Metcon or just in a strength accompanied by a weightlifting movement. This is gonna be a, a time domain, 15 to 20 minutes, of you guys working on specific gymnastics movements to help you get better. The biggest reason that we wanted to do this is a lot of times when you're trying to uh, gain a skill and learn new techniques and even develop strength, we have to slow you guys down to really refine any of those things so you guys can get better. So one day a week, you're going to choose one upper body pulling movement that could be ring pull-ups, rope climbs, pull-ups, anything in that realm. You're going to pick one upper body pushing movement, which could be handstand push-ups, dips, or even push-ups if some of you are still working on that. And then also a midline movement, so some movement for your core. That could be hollow holds, that could be L-sits, that could be arch-ups, any kind of different positions there. And you're going to work through a cycle during that with the coach kind of watching you and guiding you through the technique. The one major thing that I want everybody to focus on for this is to slow down and focus on quality. When you're trying to accumulate skill, it's not about how much you do, it's about how much you do well. So be focused on making sure that all your technique is dialed in, don't rush in between movements, make sure that everything is being done at the most technically proficient way that you're able to do it possible. Good luck, guys. Hey guys, we're gonna go over the from below the knee, plus the clean from the floor complex that we're doing in this cycle. This is a great way to build upon the lifts that we've been doing in the past. Kind of going from the hip, down to the mid thigh, to the hang, and now we're finally below the knee and from the floor. So, with this lift, we are trying to develop hip, upper back, trap, and forearm strength, as well as grip strength, because you're having to hang 
and not pull from the floor. So it's a little bit tougher on your grip, and you have to stay a little bit tighter in your back to keep the bar close. So when Rocio demonstrates, she's going to pick up the bar off the ground and work it. When she loads to below the knee, she's going to reach her hips back and squat her butt down just a little bit to get below the knee so that her shoulders are either directly above or slightly in front of the bar. Here, her back needs to stay nice and tight so that she can pull that bar into her and do a squat. Up, puts the bar back on the ground, resets, puts the from the floor where she's trying to get those same positions, pulling the bar into her, all the way to the spot. This helps to develop a lot of power with the foot. Hey guys, it's Susie again, and today we're talking about the split jerk. Finally, in this cycle, we have progress from a regular power jerk to now a split jerk if you want to do it in class for a performance group. And what the split jerk is, is the second movement from the clean and jerk. And you are going to get the barbell from the front, from your shoulders, from your uh, front rack, and then you're going to push it up overhead, and you're landing in a split wide stance. Okay, so Rocio here is going to push it up, and have it nice and high. Her um, elbows are not as high as she would in the front squat, but they are pulling the barbell. That forearm is loading that weight, so that way she can push that load up in a straight line over her head. She's going to dip slightly, and it's going to be her knees that are just dipping. Now she's feeling that weight in her heel, and she's going to execute the split jerk by driving up and pushing that weight over her head as soon as she extends her hips. And go ahead. As you can see, she is equally balanced between her right foot and her left. She could, I could split her in half, but she is nicely and wide and equal on both ends. Her knee is not going over her toe, and she has a nice little bend in her back head. That is how you do the split jerk. It helps you execute a lot more power than you would with a regular power jerk, and you're able to push a, a lot more weight usually. Uh, and you need a lot of strength and coordination to do both of these, uh, to do any sort of jerk, but also to do the split jerk. And you are able to do that, and hopefully you get a lot of your assistance. This cycle, we're adding in the single leg hip thrust. We always like to add in a little bit of glute activation. Uh, the glutes and the hamstrings definitely an important part of the body, so we want to make sure we're continuing to develop and activate those muscles. Um, we are doing these on the particular day that we are also doing dumbbell Romanian deadlifts. Um, so we are adding these in a little bit faster to proceed that movement in order to uh, contract and activate those muscles again and build the endurance in that movement. So what Angelo is doing, he's laying down nice and flat, palm facing up, and he is making sure that his uh, heel is right underneath his, his knee. So what he's going to do, oh, also, more, very important, flex the toe so that this uh, position is, is nice and, and set up. What he's gonna be doing is he's going to raise his hips, squeeze his butt at the top, and then he's going to raise back, or lower back down one, one inch off the floor. On the next one, we're actually gonna have him go as fast as possible, which is what you guys are gonna be focusing on in this cycle. So he's gonna be thrusting up and down, only going as low as one inch above the floor as he's doing so. Squeezing his butt at the top every single rep. 